Next question, which is from Assembly Member Barry, on uh, public private space and the public London Charter. Thank you, Chair. In November 2017, I said that my new London plan will include a policy to address the public realm and promote the highest level of access to public spaces. I also commissioned to develop in a public London Charter. Because the public London Charter is linked to a policy in the plan, we need to get the plan in place to give the Charter its statutory teeth. I published my draft London plan in December 2017, and it includes a policy on public access to public spaces. Since then, the plan has been through a lengthy statutory process towards final publication. Last October, I received the Planning Inspectorate's report and recommendations. In December, I submitted my intent to publish London Plan to the Secretary of State. Ten months later, it still hasn't approved it. It's unfortunate that the Secretary of State is holding up the progress of the plan despite having had it since Christmas last year. The public London Charter cannot be finally adopted until my new London Plan is published. While the plan has been sitting with the government, work on the Charter and on policy affecting London's public realm more widely have been moving forward. This includes two research projects, one led by Centre for London on how the public realm is managed and used, and the other by the GLA's intelligence unit exploring Londoners' perspectives of the public realm. As well as this research, my team has run engagement workshops with a range of stakeholders to help develop the charter involving my design advocates, the London boroughs, and organisations such as the Campaign for the Protection of Rural England, uh, London, uh, Just Space, and the Open Spaces Society. In March, I published an informal draft of the Public London Charter for Information, and despite the disruption caused to all our policy work by COVID-19, my team has been preparing the draft charter for formal consultation, which will launch later this month. This consultation will involve further engagement with a range of stakeholders, including community and voluntary sector organisations, to ensure the charter will be robust and useful to all Londoners. Through my Good Growth by Design initiative, I've also developed a good practice design guide for London's public realm, and this will be published in the autumn. Thank you, Mr Mayor, um, and I hope um, you'll see my separate statement backing up your comments on the circuit breaker um, from earlier, but please forgive my frustration on this issue, um, because the Assembly has been waiting for, for three years um, since we passed our motion, and two years ago, in response to question 2019-0272, you promised that it would be policy alongside the London plan, and yet we still only have this draft document, which is not policy it is full of the word should it is not a policy that, that can actually be enacted so i'm very frustrated about this um to cut a long story short mr mayor would you like me to draft a policy for you um for consultation on this and cut out the middleman no because <laughs> <laughs> i swear we could have written the, the assembly members here who voted for that motion three years ago could have written this policy for you based on existing research and experience from londoners and got that through consultation and got it into the to the position of being published alongside the london plan which is what your answer to my 2019 most question says maybe the whether member can help me is persuading the secretary of state to finally allow the London plan uh, to do what it's supposed to do. It's been sitting on his desk now for eight months, and if she wants to help, she can maybe exert some influence on the government. Over my time, thank you.